Welcome to Mr. Giant Reacts a Ting, a Ting, a Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some no vibes for all you. And the other day somebody commented that the audio on the video I'm watching is not the best. So I did a little of, you know, figuring out the thing and I think I have it right now. So I should have, if not perfect, almost perfect audio. Let me know in the comment section if you find anything that does not, you know, uh, that is not up to par in essence, you know what I mean? Today we're going to be watching iconic British foods you need to try before you die. You know what I mean? They always talk about the British have bland food, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And they keep carrying on like that. But uh, let's see if this held to be true, you know what I mean? Now, some of the stuff in there, I might have already tried it because, you know, after all, I'm a former British colony. But let's go in there and if it's anything I don't, I see that I don't try, I haven't tried, drop the recipe down in the bottom and think for me, all right? Let's YouTube and sim simmer all ya. British food isn't exactly the first thing people go to when they think of world-class cuisine. But forget what you've heard about it. Truth is, the UK is home to some of the tastiest dishes around. <laughs> These are iconic British foods you need to try before you die. You won't find many dishes simpler than bangers and mash. It consists of a few sausages, or one Cumberland sausage, served with a hefty dollop of mashed potatoes. More often than not, gravy will be involved. And that's pretty much it. Usually, of course, things turn out a little fancier than that. The sausages can be made from lamb or beef rather than the standard pork. The mash can be spruced up with cream or mustard, while a handful of extra side additions might be included too, depending entirely on the preference of the person making it. The first thing to know about the bacon sandwich is that... Okay, so check this out. Uh, she mentioned mustard in there. People rarely use mustard up here. When I first came up here, that's one of the things that wasn't on the on the menu list of or anywhere you go. And... Uh, I never really realized it until later because, I mean, you know, I never really ate fries home. But when I ate fries or, you know, chips like we call it, uh, I had some mustard with it. I didn't use mayonnaise or, or ketchup or anything like that other stuff, you know, that, that see some people use. But uh, I'm not a big meat eater, but I would love to try what I'm seeing there. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I. That's looking good. See, I'm starting to get hungry. It's about 12 o'clock here now, it's uh, lunchtime, and I haven't eaten yet, so I'm going to make myself even more hungry watching this vibe. British bacon isn't the same as American bacon. The British variant is leaner and meatier than the U.S. version, since it comes from the loin of the pig rather than the belly. Some would even say the British stuff is tastier, too. That's why, in the U.K., it seems far less crazy to stick a few rashers of bacon between two buttered slices of bread, slather it in ketchup or brown sauce, and just go to town on it. The bacon sandwich, or buddy as northerners call it, is the ultimate quick-fix breakfast. Some people like to spruce them up with fancy breads or fried eggs, but most of the time it's made with nothing more than bacon, bread, and sauce. And what I think makes a really good bacon sandwich is smoky bacon. I love that smokiness and I like it quite crispy. And that's just the way it should be. The full Okay, I'll be honest with you. The only bacon I eat is turkey bacon. Uh, but, you know... There was bacon, and people think there wasn't bacon back on the island because I don't, I don't eat bacon. I, except it's turkey. I just recently started eating turkey bacon, but you know, when I look at it, I could tell the difference. I could definitely tell the difference by on sight. The difference between like British bacon and American bacon, and this explains it there. And it's funny how you live in a place for so long, but then you watch a video like this and then you go, oh, so that's what the difference is. And even the smell was different because my dad ate bacon all the time and my mom ate it too. So the smell is different. Wow. That's why I like watching these videos. You know, it, it doesn't, especially videos about Britain because it jogs my memory about stuff when I was growing up back. So let's get back to the video. English is probably the most well-known breakfast in the UK. Although people make slight alterations to the dish based on their own preferences, a proper full English should include at least some combination of sausage, bacon, eggs, tomatoes, mushrooms, toast, baked beans, oh, that's and a hearty pudding. breakfast. Other regions in the UK have their own variations too. 
In Scotland, for example, a full breakfast might include haggis or oatcakes, while in Wales you might find it includes cockles or lobber bread. Although most British hotels and B&Bs will offer a full English breakfast, the best ones tend to be served in grubby little greasy spoons and should cost no more than a fiver. Don't bother trying anything too fancy with this one, you'll only be disappointed. One of the many pies and pastries to be found in British cuisine, Beef Wellington, is oh, made up I've of a lace steak coated with pâté and duxelle, which is a kind of mix good. of mushrooms, onions, and herbs. This steak is then wrapped in ham and baked in a pastry. Many recipes use pâté de foie gras, but this particular ingredient tends to be a little controversial, to say the least. This is another one of those delectably hearty dishes that you'll most often find served in pubs up and down the UK, though it's not too hard to make at home. If nothing else, it's a great use of any leftovers from a Sunday roast. One of Britain's more notorious foods, black pudding, is a kind of blood sausage made from pork <laughs> blood, fat, and cereal, yeah. which is then spiced with mint, thyme, and pennyroyal. Taste-wise, imagine eating a particularly bready kind of sausage, and you're probably halfway there. Although it's a regional specialty in the West Midlands and Northwest of England, black pudding is a staple part of the full English, so you can expect to find it on breakfast tables around the country. It is Okay. On the island, we call it blood pudding, and uh, it, it was street food. <laughs> You'd be walking on the street, and then there's a lady there with a, with a frying pan and stuff, or a deep dish frying pan, and she's fixing up some blood pudding. And I know they call it black pudding there, or you know, in England, but back home we call it blood pudding. And they put all the Caribbean spices and stuff in there, pepper, pepper, a lot of pepper some people put in there, but as a kid, I did taste it, and uh, it, it wasn't too bad, it wasn't too bad, you know what I mean, and things, so as you see, I told you that some of the things they mentioned, we ate it on the island and thing, you know, only that, you know, I don't remember us fixing it at home, though, I don't remember us fixing that at the house at all. I just remember walking down the street in the market square or walking down the side of the street and there's a woman on the side of the road doing it up as street food. Smells so good too, man. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be very easy to give the chip buddy a bad rap, but that wouldn't be very fair because this is by far one of the best comfort foods Britain has to offer. The idea is simple. You heap a load of thick cut chips, french fries for Americans, onto a slice of buttered bread, throw a little sauce on if you like, stick another slice of bread on top, and then you're good to go. Most often found in the north of England, the chip buddy is a mainstay food of the British working class. Depending on where you are in the country and on what kind of bread you're using, you might hear it referred to as a chip sandwich, chip roll, chip bap, chip cob, chip sarni, or something else entirely. Doesn't matter what it's called though, it still tastes great. At first, I've never tried, I've never, no, I'm, I, I don't know about that. But the chip thing, when I first came to America and people said uh, French fries, I was like, what are you talking about? Do you know what I mean? And then it was like, oh, you mean chips, you know? And of course, I was married here, and that's where a lot of the first things that, you know, I had to learn about, I learned through her, you know what I mean? And, so, and it was like, man, those are chips. It was like, no, those are French fries, you know? Later to be called freedom fries because everybody was mad at French. <laughs> I remember that thing. That was so dumb. But yeah, you know what I mean? And, uh, chips man you know fish and chips we have it back on the island too you know what i'm saying but let's keep going and i, I guarantee that's going to be one of the, the dishes coming up first glance chicken tikka masala may seem like an indian dish but it's believed by many to have been created by south asian immigrants in the united kingdom with one account placing its origins in glasgow this is disputed however and man, others claim it is simply a modification good. of an existing indian recipe Either way, chicken tikka masala is one of the country's most iconic and best loved dishes. It consists of small pieces of chicken that have been marinated in spices and yogurt before being oven roasted and stirred into a tomato-based curry sauce. It's usually served with rice and naan and is served in pretty much every single one of the UK's many, many, many Indian restaurants and takeaways. Also. You know, she mentioned rice. I have a question because where I live here in West Virginia, a lot of people don't eat rice. I, I noticed some people are buying rice a lot, but, you know, my friend uh, 
Tiffany, she doesn't like rice. Every time I show her a Grenadian dish, she said, nah, that rice, I don't like that rice. And there's a lot of people that does not eat, they don't eat rice here. Is rice a stable in England, uh, in Britain? I guess because of the the West Indian immigration going there, and of course the East Indian immigration going there, maybe rice became a stable, but was it like a, a stable before, or is it a stable for like everybody on the, on the island over there? Hit me up in the comment section, let me know. Also known as shepherd's pie, cottage pie basically consists of ground meat, such as beef or lamb, cooked in an onion gravy, topped with mashed potatoes, and baked in an oven. Often, it includes other ingredients, such as peas or carrots, and if it doesn't, then you'll more than before. likely find them served on the side. Many British people will remember cottage pie as a staple school dinner, and you can also find it on the menu in most pubs. But anyone will tell you that the best cottage pie is always homemade. Named for the ultra-posh and highly controversial school from which it originated, Eaton Mess is a traditional dessert made up of strawberries, meringue, and whipped cream. Some recipes include other fruits such as raspberries and blackberries, but as long as you've got something fruity to play off against that cream and the crumbly meringue, you'll be just fine. This one is best enjoyed at the height of summer. Fish and chips is one of the world's yeah. most famous British dishes, and for good reason, too. It's basically fish fried in batter served up with the thickly cut chips, usually doused in salt and vinegar, with a little ketchup or some mushy peas on the side. The fish itself is most often cod or haddock, but other kinds are occasionally used. Although you'll find fish and chips pretty much everywhere in the UK, proper seaside chippies almost always do it best. The fish is always freshly caught, the chips will be made just right, and the setting is invariably just right for the occasion. Put short, this is the ultimate British culinary experience. Game you know, this is making all this talk about, ooh, British food, ew, no, no. It seems like it's a lot simplistic, and uh, it's simply made, you know. You can make these things at home, whereas, you know, all this gourmet stuff they have, you know, all the ingredients you have to put in it. People just go in there and buy that preserved food, but... Uh, Man, fish and chips was one of my favorite things to eat back home. Uh, my, my mom used to make killer chips and, and, and fry up some killer fish, you know, homemade styly and thing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get back to the video. Pies are traditional English pastries that are best known for having become really quite over the top during the Victorian era. Although recipes for game pies have changed over the years, modern variations tend to contain meats such as venison, rabbit, pheasant, pigeon, or boar, and are mixed in with garlic, shallots or onions, bacon, pork, as well as a range of different herbs and spices. Wow. Unlike the Victorians, you needn't worry about birds stuffed within birds or crazy fancy pastry patterns. Simplicity is key here. Simplicity and a good ale, that is. The jam roly-poly is pretty much just a Swiss roll with a better name. It's a pudding made from suet dough, which is spread with the jam good. and rolled up before baking. You'll sometimes find it dusted with sugar or served with cream, custard, or ice cream, but it's a nice enough treat no matter how you have it. Modern versions often use sponge cake, like a Swiss roll, rather than suet, partly because it's easier to get hold of, and partly because it's a little more palatable. Either way, it doesn't matter, just so long as it's bursting with fruit jam. Oh man. Okay, yes, jellied eels might seem like something they'd serve you in hell, and well, yeah, they're really not that great. This dish is prepared by chopping up eels, boiling them in stock, then allowing it to cool and set into a jelly. Just to make things even better, they are also eaten cold. No. <laughs> I suppose I'm gonna go, no, no. I'm not trying that. Jellied eels are slimy, salty, and totally gross too. But they have a genuinely fascinating past, and trying a bowl of them in a proper East End establishment really does feel like you're tasting history. A kipper is basically a split. No, I tell you, I tell you, I, I've tried a... Uh squid that was actually caught in an et, you know and way back in the day before they became so endangered i tried turtle sea turtles way back you know and uh but i ain't never tried no squid 
Now, I'm sorry, man. I, I can't do that one. <laughs> I mean, I'll try anything, but I ain't going to try that one. I'm sorry. Once you said slimy, that's one reason why I don't like okros. They slimy, you know what I mean? That's one uh, texture I can't handle there. Now, I like the taste of it. I just don't like the texture of it. Herring that has been pickled and smoked, and although they're eaten Smoke all over Europe, that's another one. They're particularly popular in Britain. Nowadays, they're eaten as a breakfast food, although they're not quite as popular as they once were. So don't take them for granted if you do get hold of some. You might just be surprised how tasty they can be. We ate that a whole lot on the island, smoked herring. We ate that a whole lot on the island, uh, mainly for breakfast and thing, you know. And they they, they good in a little sandwich and stuff too, you know what I mean? You, 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 you fix it up, put it in a sandwich, you know, between two slices of bread, some tomatoes, you know, some lettuce. They good like that too, you know what I mean? And you know what I've noticed here? A lot of the food that we see in here. And I, I guess that's a general statement, but a lot of the food is just come from simple home cooked food. You know what I'm saying? Mean? Uh, nothing spiced up, nothing go made up, you know, or taught up by some great chef. You know, it's like they take the people's food and made it the people's food. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, like homegrown stuff and all of that is what it is, you know. Here, I'm. I guess if you go to a soul food restaurant, that would be sort of like it. But then when you go to all these burger joints and stuff here, you know, there's no variety, you know, really. Let's get back to the story here. It might be a shock to discover Ooh, that the new good. glory comes from the same country as jellied eels and black pudding, but it's true. Once sold almost exclusively out of the country's many ice cream vans, Knickerbocker Glories are basically elaborate ice cream sundaes made up of vanilla ice cream, strawberries, whipped cream, syrup, sprinkles, and a wafer, all served in a tall glass. Sometimes they might include chopped nuts, more syrups, chocolate, or anything else any kid could ever want. And yes, they really do taste as good as they look. Oh god, they look good. The Battenberg is easily one of Britain's most visually striking desserts, but it's definitely something of an acquired taste. The inner section is nice enough, being made up of a light sponge held together with jam. The outer layer, however, is made from marzipan, a thick fondant-like confection made up of sugar, honey, and almonds. Marzipan has got a genuinely unique flavor to it, but it's not for everyone. In fact, a 2019 survey found that it was one of the UK's most hated foods. Still, no one would blame you if you swapped it out for a little fondant instead. Funnily enough, mince pies really aren't what they sound like, although they did indeed contain minced meat once upon a time. Today, they're a sweeter treat served exclusively at Christmas. The modern mince pie is a oh. sweet pastry dusted with sugar, filled with a concoction of dried fruits and spices. They're pretty much bite-sized and are served in their millions every year. For many Brits, these things literally taste like Christmas. Oh. Thanks in part to the stratospheric rise of the fast food bakery chain Greggs, the humble pasty has become one of the UK's favorite lunch snacks. Originating in Cornwall, pasties are usually made by wrapping a filling in a pie-like pastry and then baking them. Cornish pasties always contain beef, potato, sweet, and onion, but countless different variations exist, including chicken, pork, turkey, cheese, vegetables, and more. As with anything, for the best pasties, you'll need to go straight to the oh, source, yeah. Cornwall. They don't get much better than that. Think of the plowmans as kind See, we made, we made something like that, but we know it. We just call it pastries and what they call it, pastries, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm assuming it's two separate things by the way she talk. But I remember when I was in a secondary school. Yep, secondary school, we used to have these tea parties and they would serve this stuff there with a spot of tea, you know what I mean? And I remember those days where, you know, we had the fancy smancy uh, uh, saucers and cups and stuff and uh, people come in and they spend a, they pay at a small price, you know, because all proceeds go to the school. And we serve uh, tea and, and, and pastries and stuff like that. Man, they don't do stuff like that much anymore. Well, I don't know if they still do it on the island. I just know they don't do anything like that here, you know what I mean? 
Let's get back to the video. It's kind of like the British version of the charcuterie board. It's a spread of various foodstuffs, and different places will offer different variations. But the key ingredients are bread, cheese, and onions. You might also find salad, ham, hard-boiled eggs, apple, chutney, pickled eggs or onions, or any other similar cold chutney. ingredients. <laughs> Plowman's lunches are rather famous for being sold in pubs, having once been pretty much the only type of food they would agree to serve. As such, a proper Plowman's is invariably served with a pint of beer. Another cold British classic is the pork pie, a small snack with a long-reaching history. The earliest mentions of something resembling the pork pie appear as far back as the 14th century, wow. and the use of gelatin to preserve the meat inside was a staple method of medieval cooking. Nowadays, pork pies are often included as part of a plowman's, or eaten with a salad on the side. Arguably the best around is the Melton Mowbray pork pie, which is always hand-molded, made with uncured meat, and unlike other versions, uses pork that has been chopped rather than minced. They may not look like much, but they're one of Britain's most beloved snack foods. See, I gotta take a list. So if I went when I travel there, I wanna try every one of them. Every single one of these, except the squid thing. I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. But you know, I wanna try everything because you know, what is life if you don't be adventurous, even in the tastes that you consume? You know what I'm saying and thing? Scones, or as some denizens of the UK say it, scones, are a type of sweet or sometimes savory baked food made from wheat or oatmeal. Although they come in many varieties, the most famous use oh, of scones in England is as part of cream tea, a traditional type of afternoon tea that has them served with clotted cream and jam. The pronunciation of the word is also a major point of contention amongst British people. A 2016 survey found that 51% of Britons pronounce it to rhyme with gone, whereas 42% pronounce it to rhyme with bone. The former is a northern and Scottish thing, whereas the latter is a southern thing. For some reason, Brits take this debate very, very seriously. <laughs> so, first question: scone, scone. What scone. Did... If you... scone. Well, scone. if you're from northern, it's scone. 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 It is. It scone. is scone. It's scone. 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 It's scone. The range in quality between good Scotch eggs and bad Scotch eggs is very wide indeed. That is to say that bad Scotch eggs are very bad indeed, and good Scotch eggs are nothing less than pure bliss. Scotch eggs are boiled eggs wrapped in sausage meat, coated in breadcrumbs, wow. and deep fried or baked. Yeah, They're a, a favorite bar snack up there. and down the UK, but you'll also find lesser versions in British supermarkets. A good Scotch egg should have a thick lining of high quality pork sausage meat, preferably well flavored with herbs such as parsley and chives. The egg should be soft boiled rather than hard boiled, and when you cut or bite into it, the yolk should basically explode. This is one dish that's worth the extra effort. To most British people, good. the term scouse will conjure images of Liverpool, where the inhabitants are colloquially known as scousers. But they're called this for a reason. Scouse was originally a stew concocted by sailors, which first originated in Norway and spread to Liverpool, once Britain's foremost port. Although the city has changed a lot since its imperial heyday, the dish has remained and is still served at cafes and restaurants across the Looks city. Good. This stew is usually lamb or beef based and also contains onions, carrot, potatoes, cabbage, That's and pretty much thing. any other leftover vegetable used. you have. Although beetroot tends to be a particularly popular ingredient. Served up with some nice crusty bread, Scouse comes out on top as the best winter stew out there and one of the UK's tastiest regional dishes, full stop. Stargazy pie is a truly peculiar dish, both in name and appearance. The term stargazy refers to the fact that the fish in the pie, usually pilchards or sardines, are facing outwards, with their heads sticking up through the crust. Aside from the fish, stargazy pie can contain any number of different ingredients, including hard-boiled eggs, bacon, onion, mustard, herbs, wine, and more. And although it looks downright weird, it actually tastes pretty great. It's it a does. rich, salty, and extremely filling dish that acts as an entire meal in one. The roast. That, that's, a, that's another thing here too, man. You talk about fish heads, and they go, Ew, you know what? But Fish heads, man. We eat that stuff back. We get the big fish and you put that dog in a in, in a 
in a soup or broth. Oh, all seasoned up and ting. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Dinner is probably the ultimate British dish, typically eaten on a Sunday and nowadays very popular in pubs. The typical roast is centered around one particular kind of roast meat. This can be anything from beef to pork to lamb to chicken, although game birds are occasionally used too. Accompanying the meat, you'll find any combination of roast potatoes, gravy, broccoli, green beans, cabbage, parsnips, swede, carrots, peas, and cauliflower cheese. Each different type of meat comes with its own additions, too. Roast beef, for example, is served with Yorkshire pudding, mustard, or horseradish. Pork tends to come with applesauce, crackling, and stuffing. Lamb almost always sits alongside mint sauce, and chicken is accompanied by stuffing or cranberry sauce. Arguably, the best roast dinner experience involves a pub, friends or family, and a lot of beer and wine. But nothing beats a homemade Sunday roast either, and the scope for customization is practically unlimited. Toad in the Hole is a little less gross than it sounds, mostly because it doesn't involve any actual toads. Instead, the toads are sausages, while the hole refers to a single giant Yorkshire pudding. Usually served with gravy and vegetables, Man. this dish is a kind Yo, of middle ground between the roast dinner and bangers and mash. Unfortunately, Toad in the Hole is far harder to find than either of those dishes, but it's more than worth a go if you can, especially if you love a good Yorkshire pudding. As you may have learned on a certain 90s sitcom, trifle is an English dessert made up of sponge fingers, fruit, jelly, custard, whipped cream, and decidedly not beef sautéed with peas and onions. A good trifle feels like heaven in a bowl. A great Ooh, trifle, which contains the traditional almighty. alcoholic element, such as port, sherry, or Madeira wine, is one of the best desserts out there, full stop. Every layer works together in perfect harmony, making for both a visual and literal feast for the senses. There's ample opportunity for experimentation here too, as pretty much anything that's sweet is bound to prove most welcome in whatever Man. recipe you decide to use. Good lord! Referred to on the Great British Bake Off as the nation's favorite cake, Victoria sponge cake is kind of like a sweet sugary sandwich, in which a filling of jam and cream sits between two thick layers of light frosted sponge. So the jam too. It's not a hugely common menu item in British restaurants or pubs, but the Victoria sponge cake is a favorite for home bakers, and almost every Brit has turned their hand to it at least once before. Luckily, it's a cinch to make, and more than worth the effort too. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed. Okay, I am totally famished right now, man. That stuff look good, you know. And and this, I'm gonna have to show some of the people up here that talk about British food. Ew, you know, man, blowing stuff out the water. Nice and simple too, you know. Kind of like the islands, you know what I mean. Food is nice and simple. Like when I used to cook here, my son would go, man, that smells like a gourmet restaurant. How do you do that, daddy? And it's like, man, you know, ingredients, bro, ingredients, you know. Just spread the aroma all over the place and thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I ain't gonna babble on too much. I will leave a link in the description for this video. You all go check it out. I'm also leave links up there and uh, on the side here somewhere that you all could click and go watch more videos on on, on uh, Britain and stuff. You understand what I'm say? You all take care of each other. All right, cool runnings.